I want to go over squirrels for a little bit. Um, I have been playing around with this build. Squirrels, the build we have on max roll is a life based build. Um, as much as I like our, our, our squirrel build, I always wondered how to scale our sustain even further. And going low life apparently is the way to go. So clear solution is one of the biggest addition to the, to the game recently. And I do expect to see a nerf to this for 1.0, but if not, low life is still going to be incredibly, uh, overpowered. Well, let's not say overpowered, but like, it's going to be the best options for multiple different builds. And I do think squirrels is one of them. So I've been messing around with low life squirrel. So for those who don't know, when you go low life, you go with a sanguinous. Uh, you go with last steps of the living and you go for the experimental affix for current health loss per second and missing health and gain as ward per second on your gloves. So this is kind of like the holy trinity of low life. Only with these items, you can already reach a pretty good amount of ward. Uh, Cleaver solution adds to this by giving you uh, intelligence scaling based on your strength. So what does intelligence give you? Intelligence gives you access to ward retention, right? It gives you 4% ward retention per point. And so since squirrels scale with strength, you scale strength on your gear, your intelligence is equal to your strength. And by that, uh, by that same thing, you get quite a bit of ward retention. As you can see, my gear currently is not that great. Uh, to play squirrels, you need the Herald of the Scurry Helm, which gives you nice plus levels to summon wolves. It converts your wolves into squirrels, and you can summon them up to twice your companion limit. Uh, on top of that, your Howl is replaced by uh, Screwerine Rage, which, which gives them 40% movement speed and attack speed for 4 seconds. So, it's just an insane buff, on top of other things like shredding and giving them bleed on hit. So, you can play squirrels in different ways. Uh, Crit or bleed, or possibly possibly a hybrid of both. Uh, with my current setup, I went for crit. The only thing that I really need is a uh, base critical strike chance for uh, for minions on your chest piece. So you would want to grab uh, have this on your actual exsanguinous. Um, one thing that you need to know about playing a minion build that are permanent minions like this is that when they are summoned, they take the stats that you have currently equipped. So they snapshot their stats based on when you summon them and that they, they reset when you load into a, another zone or, uh, you know, you close the game or something like that, or when you have to resummon them again. But um, that is pretty important to know to uh, be able to maximize your damage output with your squirrel. Anyway, that being said, um, yeah, my gear is not that great at all. Another one here is Apogee the Frozen Light plus three to cold and necrotic minion skills. This gives you access to um, this node, Tundra Stalkers, gives your wolves a cold tag, meaning that they will benefit from the plus three to cold minion skills, and thus giving you access to like a lot of power from this. Not only this, but you also get more cold and necrotic damage to chilled enemies, which they will be chilled because of this node here, particularly 10% chance to chill on hit. And with so many hits on your squirrels, uh, Enemies are just always triple stacked on chill. Um, so yeah, Apogee does work like this. And then there's another little combo that I like to do is I just added a belt for summoning zombies, volatile zombies on potion use. As you can see, I, ha I have a zombie. Uh, and then if you equip the cycle of future sense uh, ring, this one gives you a chance to resurrect your zombies equal to 100% divided by your number of zombies. This means that if your zombies uh, as long as you have one zombie, it will constantly resummon, right? They're like, as long as you have this ring, you will always have zombies. Apogee of Frozen Light says, well, you gain a stack of Frozen Vengeance when a one of your minions dies. So, your zombie is the one that will always die, because you don't want to have your squirrel die. There are other me methods that you could use. You could use an idol to, su to have, like, bees being summoned, but it's, like, way less um, consistent. And having the zombie always dying and giving you multiple stacks of frozen vengeance all the time. So as long as you have cycle of future sense, you summon you summon a zombie once. You don't even need to summon more. Like after this, you could actually swap this belt for something else, and it wouldn't even matter because your zombie would constantly be resummoned. Re 
Um, but when you hit an enemy with a melee attack, you will expand a stack of Frozen Vengeance, giving your minions Frenzy and 24% more damage to shield enemies. So that's another more multiplier. On top of that, you freeze everything that is not rare or boss in the nearby surroundings. So every single one of your melee attacks, you know, if you leap into a pack and you melee, uh, actually, Fury Leap is also melee. So you leap into a pack, everything's frozen. If it's if it's a rare or, or boss enemy, you can War Cry, since your War Cry is spec to also freeze. Um, and then War Cry also gives you access to more hit damage taken while frozen. So that's why like your squirrels uh, benefit even more, and that's why I decided also to go for uh, for crit even more than bleed. But it's it's just incredibly good. You get sustain from being low life um, constantly, so you get constant regen. You get constant freezing everything, and you have insane DPS, which can actually kill Jolra tier four Jolra in just a couple seconds. Um, so overall, I think this is absolutely great. Um, it's just been a blast to play this build, even though I don't have good gear, even though I don't have a lot of strength, so I don't have a lot of intelligence. So I don't even have that great, like that great of a ward pool. This thing can go up to like upwards of 15k ward if you have good gear. So this build scales very well, easy to get going so long as you have Herald of Scurry. And um, yeah, I highly suggest it. So let's go over exactly uh, what I was doing here. So mainly the wolves. The only important nodes here are the damage nodes, right? You want to go for damage, damage here as well. This one's giving you more melee crit chance, enabling enabling you enabling you to uh, cap your crit very very easily alongside frenzy totem crit. As long as you have a frenzy totem, um, they are granted two hundred and fifty percent increased critical strike chance. So that alongside this pretty much caps your crit. Um, and you have some passives as well that help you, but like that's that's the main thing that you need to know, right? It's very very easy to cap crit. You go cold here, and then you go for the maximum wolves and maximum companion. Um, so this branch alongside this damage node, this attack and movement speed, this damage. This one is pretty important to know. The bonus is tripled if your wolves are howled recently. So using swiggering rage, um, like your initial combo that you want to do. Is you actually want to switch uh, squirring rage first, and then you put down your frenzy totem, you leap, you war cry, and you swiggering rage again, and then you start melee attacking. Melee attacking because swipe gives you access to wild calling. And it's the spirit wolves on hit chance, so you have a forty five percent chance to summon spirit wolves from your squirrels. Well, it's actually spirit squirrels, um, and these scale with your minion stack. Your squirrels scale their own stats, and you also scale their damage with your own attack speed. So, very important to try to get as much attack speed as possible. And as you can see, it just does a ridiculous amount. But yeah, so this is this is the way to go. This one here, and then wolves up to your companion limit. Um, there is another amulet that you could use for this, but I do prefer using Death Rattle, which has up to 100% critical strike multiplier on it. Um, and then after this, the, the rest the rest of the of the points don't really matter that much. It's kind of like personal preferences. I went for the leap attack because I do like to have the wolves uh you know be a little bit more swift and agile while running through through monos. I gave them a little bit more armor and physical health leech because I wanted to survive a little bit more. Uh you can certainly play around and even like, for example, you could remove one point from damage here, uh one point here or here, and it no, if you want to give them more leech, if you want to give them more health, um, if you want to go for the frozen fang node, if you want to go like, there's multiple different options, but the most important ones are this branch and that branch here. So that is pretty much it for the wolves. Uh, Summon frenzy totem gives us an, some incredible buffs. So most of your flat damage for your wolves will come from frenzy totem, which gives you 25 plus 20 for your uh, for your companions, right? So some of your flat comes from here. Some of your flat comes from uh, using Fury Leap and get, giving them 15 melee damage uh, once you leap. Uh, so th these are kind of like really, really important nodes to be able to scale flat damage even further. Um, you get access to increased frenzy effect from your totem. You, this one is also really important, Furious Cry. 
Every time that you use your Frenzy Totem, it will refresh the Squiggering squ Rage from your minion's ability. So keep in mind that this is an instant cast, so you can just keep it on all the time while you're running in monos. I usually just hold uh, Frenzy Totem and Squiggering Rage so that, you know, Squiggering Rage has a longer cooldown than Frenzy Totem, so you'll get more uptime on, on it if you just like use it with Summon Frenzy Totem. So I go with this. You go obviously with a crit with a flat damage. And then uh, the rest of the points I put into health and duration. But these would be uh, possibly used somewhere else if you find another use for them. Right? But they are quite nicer quality of life. And then so long as, you're, as you have a frenzy totem up, you get all the buffs. So it, it ensures that you get your buffs most of the time. Uh, the most important thing in swipe is uh, wild calling for the spirit wolves. As I said earlier, scales your damage, scales your scrolls damage with your own attack speed. Pretty important here, mana gain, duality of nature. You gain mana when you swipe because this does consume quite a bit of mana. And so you will want to have mana back with your swipe. So that is your way of gaining your mana back. And then you want to go for the kill threshold. An important thing to note here that is that you go by the health leech node here and you have quite a bit, you have like quite a bit of healthy. As, as you can see, if I keep swiping, my health is up and I'm not getting the benefits from being low life. What I would want to do is try to get some legendary, legendary potential on, um, on my boulder fist so that, I, so that I could equip this and still have the current health loss per second and the missing health gained as ward, right? So that is one way to do so. Um, if not, if you want to use certain... Um, if you want to make clever use of cert, uh, how minion works, right? There are other options like Zithras Conundrum because, you know, if you summon your wolves, you get the crit multi, you can just equip this one, and you have no health leech. So this prevents you from getting any health whatsoever. You can experiment with different items, but we'll not go into this uh, in this video. Just because I, I do want EAG to fix snapshotting for 1.0, but if it's, not, if it's not fixed, then maybe we go a little bit more in-depth into that subject. Anyways, let's get back to, uh, to our skill trees here. You want to like have some way to um, delete your health leech, and still have access to the kill threshold. Why is kill threshold so nice? Um, there is such a thing in this game called boss DR, dynamic DR, so that as you deal more and more damage to bosses, for example, Droll Ra, for example, any timeline boss, they will get more and more resistance to your attacks. Um, so the, the, the actual last bit of their health, if you have big damage, that's the most difficult part to go through because they have more DR. So if you have a high kill threshold, then you're effectively not only reduce. This is giving you way more than 14% damage, right? So you would think if I have a 14% kill threshold, I have 14% more damage, right? Well, it's actually pretty like significant against bosses because of this dynamic DR that is in the game. Um, dynamic DR is supposed to be changed in some way eventually. I don't think it's going to be there for 1.0. But um, yeah, th that note is really, really important. So I went for this, I went for that. And then um, I went for, okay, th this is kind of trolling because there is, there is another thing you can do, actually. It's called, there, there's another helm called Howl of the West Wind, right? Howl of the West Wind is this, uh, this helm here. This gives your wolves uh, additional melee lightning damage equal to your own melee lightning damage. There is such a thing as summoning your squirrels, equipping the other helm. If you have melee lightning damage on your weapons, you know, they will also get this on top of the buffs from the squirrels. So, like, I'm not going to go into too much details, but, like, just, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty un, un, unethical to do so. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Anyways, let's get back here. Fury Leap, we're getting this for the global melee damage there. We're getting your companions leap with you. I would not like to play without this. It just feels so, so, so good that whenever you leap somewhere, all of your companions come with you and they, uh, you know, they start attacking the target that you are actually freezing because of your stacks of Frozen Vengeance and everything. So it, it, it's just really nice. Good quality of life. On top of this, this gives you access to immunity while leaping. And also it pulls enemy in. So your squirrels don't have like a super high AoE, uh, super big AoE. So this just kind of makes it a little bit easier. And then um, I went for Fury Leap, cast Lightning Bolt. This is only to get access to haste. 
Uh, I don't have the best idols in the world. So the best thing that you would want would be chance on uh, chance on summoning a totem to gain haste and then also minion melee attack speed. But I am using a passive here to get haste on hit just because I want to be able to move a little bit faster. And um, this gives me access to lightning bolt. So more hits before I even, I even uh, finish my leap. So this give me more haste. That's the only reason. Most important one here is um, the melee damage, the leap, the immunity, and the pull. The rest doesn't really matter. You, I mean, the cooldown is nice and all, but like the rest doesn't really matter. Uh, War Cry, there's multiple different ways that you can go about it. Um, one thing I really like about War Cry, War Cry is that it pulls instead of knocking back if you, if you use this. This is pretty good against boss fights. For example, Jolra, if she moves into her lasers, uh, you can just use War Cry to try to pull her back towards the center. Um, just in general, it's good for clear, right? And then I use the spell physical damage there because it hits and it actually gives me access to even more haste. So that's another reason why I put this here. But the most important one is the hit damage taken while frozen. And then also uh, in invulnerable after using War Cry. And the Berserk. Berserk gives you uh, attack speed, right? It gives you attack speed. And as we said, attack speed uh, also scales your, your squirrel's damage because of Spirit Wolf. So that is pretty important. So that is why I went with this. You get Berserk on use, and then you get Berserk duration, so it's easier to maintain your stacks. Um, so that is pretty much how I use Warcry. These notes for the area could be used somewhere else. Uh, I don't need the crit chance. I don't need like there's there, like I don't need this 100% crit chance or the chill chance. So these are really not needed to cap your crit. You could certainly go for it, but you don't need them. Um, so that is how I spec my Warcry, and then the walls we already talked about it. Let's go into the passives here. Pretty straightforward. I go for health. I go for strength because as we know it, strength with clear solution is what we're trying to achieve. High, high amounts of strength. We go for dual wielding, increased health here. And most important note, below 35% health, you take less damage and deal more melee damage. We don't care about the more melee damage, but the less damage taken on low health is pretty freaking big. We have nothing in Shaman, nothing in Druid. Shaman, you could actually put five points in here to get access to um, uh, increased cooldown recovery speed with uh, Fury Leap. As you can see, I'm only level 97, so I'm not totally decked out. And then I also have these points in the uh, Beast Master Tree for the haste on hit that don't really, you know, ideally, if you have good idols, you don't really need these points. So you could also go for like armor with an active totem because getting flat armor is pretty good if you have a, such a high amount of strength because strength also gives you percentage increased armor. Um, so these nodes will be pretty good alongside the attack speed with an active totem because you do have a frenzy totem pretty much active at all times. So options there that you can put in Shaman. We have nothing in the Druid. You don't want Endurance because Endurance does not affect the ward that you're, um, that you're getting, right? So usually on a health build, you would want to build Endurance, but not on the low life build because ward does not, uh, Endurance does nothing to ward. So you don't get any uh, reduction in damage there. Pretty much all of our points are in Beast Master. Strength and damage taken from nearby, nearby enemies, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, these nodes here are for the aspect of the boar. Uh, pretty much mandatory on heck, even any primalist, I'd say. Like if you're not a melee primalist, you don't take this one. But then again, we need the strength. So that's why we go for this. Um, and we also are melee, but it helps us. So. I go for uh, these three points. It's I just need to have one point in here I, uh, to be able to go to the next node, which is Aspect of the Shark grants attacks and spell a chance to reduce enemy armor. So Aspect of the Shark gives you seventy five percent uh, gives your you seventy five percent melee damage and attack speed uh, ten percent attack speed. Right. Uh, this gives you sixty percent chance to shred, and also uh, your companions are granted Aspect of the Shark whenever you are. So. With only three points, heck, even maybe two, you would have enough stacks of shred on the enemy to, um, you know, get the basically the maximum benefit. The stacks of armor shred that you want is at least 100 stacks. You want to reach 100 stacks fairly quickly, and that's pretty much a sweet spot for the, uh, uh, the increase in damage that you will be getting. Anything above that is, is nice to have, right? You'll still get a bit more damage. But the difference between 0 and 100 stacks is absolutely massive. 
And the difference between 100 stacks and 1,000 stacks is barely noticeable. It's like, I don't know, maybe like 5% or something. I'd have to check the numbers again, but like at least 100 stack is a pretty good rule of thumb to know that, okay, if, if the enemy has 100, 100 stacks of armor shred with no increased effect, well, that's like, that's the sweet spot that you want to be in. Uh, here you give your minions attack speed and move speed. Pretty freaking good. Melee damage. So you get a bit more flat here from uh, to your minions. One point in here makes your endurance applies to your companion. You do have 20% endurance base. So even like for one point, they get 20% endurance. That's pretty nice. Uh, I go from one point here, ask for the shark chance on kill, and then on hit against rares and bosses as well. So just a way to maintain it a little bit more. And then Aspect of the Shark effect and Aspect of the Shark duration. Why do I go here? I'd like to reach at least about 65% increased Aspect of the Shark duration. Just to be completely sure that during the, the entire um, uh, 3 seconds uh, is it increased to 5 seconds. Because Ambush only gives you Aspect of the Shark every 5 seconds. So in the worst case scenario, you will get access to Aspect of the Shark for the entire duration. Um, and you have permanent uptime on it. The other place where you can get this is on uh, on idols. You can actually get aspect of the shark duration as a prefix here. That's what I would go for. Three into cry of the links gives you a little bit more a little bit more crit chance, but it's only to get access to the crit multiplier for your minions here. And then fifty percent companion melee attack speed, extremely good. One extra companion, which equals to two extra companions because we're, you're using the helm, which doubles your amount of companions, and then more flat scale so that is what i use uh again for idols what you will want what you would want would be chances uh, chance on haste to summon a um a chance on chance on summoning a totem to get haste and, and increase mini melee attack speed and then here you would want to have um uh what is it increase mini melee attack speed and aspect of shark duration right aspect of shark duration. So that is pretty much how I build my character. If we go over to Blessing, I have Void Res here. I have Lightning Res. I have Poison Res. I have Physical Res. As you can see, I'm getting most of my resistances from my Blessings. And here I have Minion Damage. You, 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 you could very well go for Flat Armor here. If you have a lot of Strength, you'll be way more tanky if you use the Flat Armor here. Because as I said earlier, Strength also increases your percentage increased armor. And yeah, that will just make you way more tanky. So, I don't have good gear. I've been having a blast. I've been pushing to upwards of 500 corruption with this. No problem with this kind of like okay gear. Um, it's fun. It's fun, guys. It's really, really fun. I'll have a planner down below so you can check out all the stats that, you, um, that I'm using. You can also check my actual character. I have a link to how to do so as well. You can check exactly the gear that I have. Or you can check my ideal planner. That I will have for you. Anyway, this has been pretty pretty fun. Uh, this would be one of the best drill rough farmer for sure. It's like one of the highest single target in the game. Not the absolute highest, but um, it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close, and you can do a lot of shenanigans with uh, you know, certain items if you wish. Anyways, that's gonna be all for today, guys. I'll see you guys all in the next video, and don't forget, keep on blasting.